Hey, I'm Monique. And I'm Jamie. And we're Compostable LA, Compostable LA. And we are... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're a compost pickup service here in Los Angeles. That's right. So I just want to let everybody know that we're being COVID safe. We all got COVID tests before this shoot and we all are vaccinated and we're trying to keep our distance. So I hope you guys stay safe too. And if you're not in LA, don't worry. We're gonna show you some cool ways that you can compost at home. Let's do it. What? So method number one is Bokashi, also known as EM. It's from Japan and the island that I grew up on, Okinawa. So Bokashi is super easy. You're just gonna take inoculated bran or inoculated wheat and you're gonna sprinkle it on top of your food scraps inside an airtight container. So we have our bokashi here that we're doing. So there's holes in the bottom here and you're going to uh, put it in the bin that does not have holes like this. That's gonna be airtight, but it's also gonna allow for any liquid that's in here to like percolate to the bottom. I will just take whatever food scraps and paper scraps that I have. And once you have kind of like a nice layer, you're then gonna take your bran. You just sprinkle some on there. The other thing that I like is very helpful is if you take like some old paper bags or cardboard and just like put it on top. So we just went ahead and made this, which is just a cover. And you're just gonna go ahead and like push that down, get, some, get that air out as much as possible. I like to put something heavy on top <laughs> just to keep it, you know, as airtight as possible. And once you fill that up, you're gonna let that sit for two weeks. And after that two weeks, you just take it and you put it in soil and let it sit for another two weeks and then you're gonna have compost. So Bokashi is dope for people who don't like bugs and people who live in small apartments. The downside might be that if you don't have a place to put the Bokashi for the two weeks, it might be a little challenging. If you don't have an outdoor space, you might have to negotiate with some people that do in order to keep it buried in the soil for the two weeks that it needs. So you're probably wondering how hard this is. On the scale of level of difficulty, it's pretty easy. Like there's not a lot to manage. All you really have to do in terms of like the cost and the management is the upfront cost of getting the bins. And then occasionally you're probably gonna have to buy more bran. But that also depends on how much food waste you have and like your frequency of use, but generally that's kind of it. So if you want something that makes you feel earthy and simple and like you don't wanna like get too naturey, this is like a good option for you. All right, for method number two, we're gonna talk about vermicomposting. So vermicomposting is basically using worms to break down your food waste. People create little worm farms and what they do is that in a nice shaded area of your yard or balcony, you're gonna have your food scraps on top and the worms will eat that and create really nutrient rich soil on the bottom where you harvest it. So to get started, all you need is your container for the farm as well as your worms. A lot of people purchase red wigglers and they can eat half their body weight in food per day. Okay, so we're gonna show you how to set up a worm bin. You first have to create the bedding. So that can be coconut core, a layer of finished compost, newspaper. So what we're gonna do for this one is add a layer of compost. As you can see, I already have some laid down. Add a little bit more and then some shredded newspaper. The shredded newspaper gives them air so they don't feel suffocated. And you're gonna wanna add a little bit of moisture to this as well. And then you would add your worms, commonly red wigglers to this and give it about a week for them to get settled in before you start adding your food scraps. When you add your food scraps, you're just gonna create a layer on the top, making sure to leave out citrus, meat and dairy. But any other kind of organic material like your veggie scraps, that's all fair game. So what you'll see here is a little nozzle for the liquid that's coming off because remember you wanna keep this somewhat wet, not overly moist. But once you fill up this layer, you're gonna wanna add a second layer. Create a whole new bedding here and then immediately add your food scraps on top and the worms will work their way up through these little holes. So as you fill up, you'll just continue adding more and more layers. The most finished compost is gonna be on the bottom and then the newer stuff will be on the top. So when you're ready to harvest, you're gonna pull the tray off from the bottom and then when you're empty him, he'll become the top layer again. 
The pros of vermicomposting is that it's super great for small spaces. You can do it on your patio. Some people even do it inside. And it really does give this amazing quality soil. It's the superfood for plants. The con is you have to be comfortable with worms and that might be a deal breaker for you. The other thing is that the quality of the soil can be a bit high in nitrogen. So you're gonna wanna make sure you mix that in with some soil to dilute it a bit. But if you can make friends with your worms, it's a great option. So vermicomposting is actually quite easy. There might be initial troubleshooting questions, but you know, the internet is full of information for you. Really, the initial costs are just that upfront for those bins and the worms. But then the worms, if they're happy, are just gonna reproduce and you'll never have to buy them again. Vermicomposting is great for anybody who lives in a small space and is great because there's really no continued costs. Once you get your initial setup, you're good to go. Method number three, a drop-off or pickup service. So if Bokashi and vermicompost are not your thing, which I understand, mm -hmm. you have the option to try either a drop-off or a pickup service like us, Compostable LA. Drop-off is very straightforward. Just find a community garden or a farmer's market where you can drop off your compost. If you feel like you don't have a lot of time to do it, you can actually take your food scraps, put them in a paper bag, put them in the freezer, and then just drop it off once a month or whenever you can. For the pickup service, even simpler than that. So we just bring a clean bin to you if you pay for our service. We leave the bin there, you put your food scraps in. On the day we come to pick it up, you put it outside your door, we take it and we leave you a new clean bin. Very easy. The pros of a drop-off service is that usually it's free and that's amazing and it's great for community building. Maybe you're dropping off at your neighbor's backyard and how awesome is that to really connect with that person. The other part of that is that it's usually staying within the community it's created. The cons is that you gotta remember to go. I've had it where my freezer is chock full of food waste and I just keep forgetting to bring it. So the benefits of a pickup service is just how easy it is. I mean, all you have to do is put your bin outside and maybe your bin just lives outside and you don't even have to remember that much. The cons is you probably have to pay for a service like this. Usually there's a monthly fee associated with it. This type of method is ideal for anybody who wants a more hands-off approach. So it's still sustainably minded and wants to do something good for the environment, but maybe not ready to roll their sleeves up and get their hands dirty. If you want to learn more, check us out at compostablela.com. And we hope you start composting today, whether that's at home or using a service. You can see a whole list of services at litterlist.com. So maybe there's one in your area.